Hi everyone, the 6.5 is on the road here at AWS reInvent 2025 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Been a great week here in Las Vegas at the show as we have seen this place packed wall to wall, not just in one or two of the hotels, but really up and down the Las Vegas Strip. People are here to hear from CEO Matt Garman and the executive leadership team and so many other of the partners that you can find throughout this great event about what is going on at AWS. It's innovation in infrastructure, it's innovation across AI, agents, developers. And another thing that the company's been focused a lot on is software, data, observability. And I have a great guest today that's gonna to join me, Nandini Ramani, not the first time on the show to talk a little bit about what's going on with observability here at AWS. Thanks for having me again. I really look forward to this now every year. Yeah, so I got to ask before, you know, you heard me try to give the entire rundown of the show in two minutes. That's not possible. So much <laughs> going on, but kind of, how's it gone for you so far? It's been fabulous. I mean, you mentioned Matt's keynote and I was just thinking about the layers that he walked through and the rapid fire seg segment with so many new innovations and features and launches. So. I'm really energized this year, I have to say. And I had the privilege of kicking off the reInvent this year with the first, very first innovation talk. And clearly, given the attendance, cloud ops is on everybody's mind. And so it was, it's been fabulous. And by the way, the expo, for those who went there, we have like so many startups on AWS, like you can feel the energy. Yeah, as an analyst, I spent a little time, you know, a lot of, uh, clients we advise and companies that we work with over in the expo, uh, some great startups, some that were small a few years ago with big booths. So you've seen them them explode, which is really exciting. And then of course you see that next wave of companies coming up. And that was something Matt really did focus on is there is a really vibrant ecosystem of companies that are building on AWS. And I think some of the tools, especially for you know agent development, exactly. you know, Kira, new IDEs and, and everything that's going to be uh, en enabled because a lot of this is going to be about speed. It's going to be about the speed of being able to build and get things to market. I know we've been super focused on like oh, how, how much, how fast is inference and throughput, but in the end, it's like how quick can I get an agent deployed that can do something exactly. valuable? And how do I do that most efficiently, effectively with the available infrastructure? Because exactly. <laughs> we know there's only so much compute out there. That's <laughs> definitely finite. But hey, let's ground the conversation a little bit back into you know mm -hmm. what you're what you're super focused on. Um, you know, the modern observability in the stack, like what are the challenges that organizations are facing right now, especially with the AI explosion and data explosion that comes yeah, with it? Yeah, yeah. I think that is the biggest thing. We always call it the needle in the haystack problem, but I, I feel like the haystack is getting bigger. There's layers of bales or whatever the vocabulary is for that. I have to think of a better analogy, but it is getting more complex. And we've seen this even before the Gen AI revolution, if you will, and it's only getting even more so. But I, here's what I will say. So I look at observability in layers, if you will. You, Matt mentioned this, and yeah. in fact, Andy has, Jassy posted on LinkedIn, and it's well worth the read for those of you, for your viewers. You heard it. Yeah. So he talks about like our meat and potatoes. Like I know you said inference, compute, storage, all of these yeah. things. We continue to evolve and innovate and lots of new features and launches related to that because that is the backbone on which you are running these agents and leveraging Gen AI and all of those things. So we haven't forgotten that. And while agents are being deployed, there's also traditional microservices also being deployed and agents do not work in a silo. They work hand in hand with, you know, human led or uh, agent enabled and so on and so forth. So that's thing one in observability. Yeah. So the core of it still continues. Now let's get back to your data explosion piece because <laughs> that is a key component of why observability and matters and visibility into all of the data. It's still foundationally based on telemetry, based on logs, metrics, and traces. And we have lots of innovations. In fact, one of the ones was in Matt Garman's keynote with the a unified data lake, and then we've, you know, so many other features, so. So I think both of us alluded to it in my preamble and your in your first answer, this pivot to agentic and AI. I know you featured that prominently in your innovation talk yeah. as well. You know, how is AWS rethinking observability? Because this really should change it. It should change 
that needle in a haystack problem. It should change the size of security teams when suddenly you have, yes, you have your SecOps people and stuff, but they have a team of agents working all the time. Right. Now, this is really exciting. How, how are you kind of reframing yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, it is very exciting. So um, I mentioned the first layer of foundation and your earlier question, and I, the way we think about um, agents, it's twofold when it comes to cloud operations and observability. Thing one, is the big announcement at Matt's keynote. Yep. How do you get agents to help you go faster, smarter, um, you know, higher quality code, all of that? So we launched Fr Frontier Agents to do that across three pillars, all three meeting developers where they are. So Kiro, the security agent, and the DevOps agent. Yeah. So that's a layer of how we think about how do we get, how do we bring tools and agents to developers our first most important cohort um, to meet them where they are. So it has integrations into uh, Jira, GitHub, and um, Slack, et cetera, which is what we all use every day. IDs are the thing. In fact, my own developers use Kiro all the time, and yeah. you can see the um, velocity of code commits going up as we speak. And the security agent is super important because it prevents vulnerabilities from ever going to production, which is very proactive. So when it comes to observability, the key thing is how can agents reduce uh, your MTTR? We have classic examples of um, Commonwealth Bank of Australia. They use um, DevOps agent and they have found that they could resolve issues in a matter of minutes, like 15 minutes to resolve an issue relative to the hours that it would take them previously. Just think about the freedom it gives you to continue to innovate for your customers in sort of troubleshooting. So super powerful uh, from an agentic space. But when it comes to agent, there's also the next layer of it, which is agents are awesome. They uh, help you get more efficient, faster, smarter, et cetera. However, think about, let's give, let me give you an example of a chatbot handling a billing issue for your end customer. In a matter of seconds, it goes through all kinds of data and everything and gives a response to the agent. Now, when it comes to observability, it's no longer just enough to say it ran with a latency of two seconds and a status code of 200 and whatever parameter. All of that's important, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But observability when it comes to agents is taking it an additional direction because you need to understand the decision tree of what your agent is doing. How do you know which model it invoked, what, how, what every knowledge base query that it's doing, you need to be able to track it. So one of the other innovations we've d uh, launched recently is the agent core observability in order to monitor what your agents are doing. I, uh, in fact, I call now the new observability is your control plane for trust, safety, and accuracy because when you deploy agents, it has transformed the meaning of, of observability and I will take it another level and tell you agent, agent core evals, evaluations was another announcement. That goes into how do you observe the trust, trustfulness, helpfulness, accuracy of the agent. Yeah. Like it can respond, but if it's unhelpful answers, it's not the same. No, that actually makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of people, we sort of have, we're in this space between two worlds. Some people see this almost like a panacea. You get the agents running, everything starts to become autonomous. A lot of work has to be done between here and there. Others are probably slightly more fearful. Um, if you have very sensitive data, important security, yeah. if you have uh, regula regulated industry, stuff like that, like you want to deploy all these technologies. It was just like the cloud was at one time. Yeah, like you yeah. want this because it is probably going to create an easier, scalable approach. But you're also like, who do we blame who, when something goes wrong? And, and so things like the evaluation, things like agent core observability is pretty important. And it, by the way, isn't something that's been talked about a lot? Like, you know, all these companies are saying, deploy an agent, deploy an agent. Well, who's watching all of that? Exactly. And so I think that's a really <clears throat> interesting area to kind of keep an eye on. You know, we've been looking a lot at kind of one of the biggest growth areas in the market. I think we put like a 50% CAGR on this over the next five years is going to be AI platforms mm -hmm. that basically are the tools that enable the building of AI. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. We see that industry being, I mean, the bull case is like almost a trillion dollars in the next five years. Now, again, it's going to grow. It's small right now. It's like 25 billion. Yeah, we yeah. think, you know, it's got a lot of growth and these are the tools. 
the stuff These are building. totally the, the tools, and which is why while we launched the Frontier agents, in parallel, we launched the ability for you to understand what those agents yeah. are doing, not just like it's go huge. build. So, yeah. So Matt talked about the unified data store. That's pretty interesting. I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about why that's important. Yeah. So when you think, when it comes to telemetry, and we just went through how agents work 24 seven, autonomous, et cetera, and so I they're like generating a lot of <laughs> telemetry. And so you need a place to store the data. Obviously you can federate, uh, agents can go anywhere. But today it's still very complicated for a lot of customers. This is going back to why the foundations matter. The unified data lake, when you think about it, whether it's a security use case, a compliance use case, or an observability use case, you're looking at the same telemetry. It's VPC flow logs, it's WAF logs, it's logs, metrics, and traces from your application and your infrastructure and so on. But the use cases are different. And so today, customers have to deal with my, uh, you know, some data is here, the other data is stored in a different database and a third one, and then you build, you have to do a lot of e DIY, mm -hmm. ETL pipelines and things to bring all the data together. This lake, we've made it super simple. All your data is in one place. You can also um, query the data. We use open standards. Everything is in there. And so we are super excited. We feel like this democratizes data for everyone. Yeah, you got to democratize data, the tools we kind of hit on. Um, and by the way, we ran some analysis in our lab of agent core versus uh, DIY. Okay. And we actually did find that there was some pretty significant savings in terms of bringing agents on that were secure and, and functional correctly versus the, the whole DIY thing. It was, it was pretty meaningful. And we'll put some links in the show notes so you, you, know, you out there, they might want to see what those stats look like. They were, they were impressive, like in some cases, like triple digit percentage more efficient getting these agents. Totally, the my God, yes. Yeah. And in fact, you talked about the show floor and the expo. The reason that it's such a vibrant startup community is because we are simplifying yeah. where, how you can build trustworthy agents, you know, and security is job zero for AWS at every layer, so. Absolutely, so let's look into the future a little bit you know mm -hmm. i mean we're sort of i think guiding that way we know ai we know agents but like what are you excited about that this is going to enable um because observability has been a long time problem as long as data has been being developed trying to understand the data has been a problem but AI seems like it should be really kind of creating this yeah. immediate this much more high value you started with the needle in a haystack yeah i mean are we there we're getting there. So the, I, I always look at this continuum, right? While agents help you get more efficient, smarter, et cetera, on the flip, it helps you solve a lot of old problems. Yeah. It's also creating more operational complexity. You're going to have so many agents. You have to manage those agents, which is why we do a human in the loop approach okay. to agents. I don't know if your viewers know this, but at AWS, development teams are responsible for every part of their service. You do the troubleshooting, you respond to the pager, you, you know. Yeah. So now when you're getting assistance from Agentic, my teams use Kiro for everything. We're using the security agent, we're using all of these tools internally, but ultimately the developer is still responsible. So the assistant will continue to grow. It's generating so much more telemetry. So we have to figure out ways, hence the lake. Yeah. We want to make it easy for you to have the lake. We want to give you, not all logs are equal. Yeah. How do you make sure that, you know, which is why we innovate all the way from the silicon to the application layers. And I'm super excited to, for what's to come. I mean, I look at um, last year's reInvent to now. Yeah. Look how far we've come. Yeah. I can't wait to where we're going to be next time I talk to you. For yeah, this. I mean, year to year, you know, AWS, probably for the first time really since it's sort of, <laughs> since it, 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 when it came to market, felt a little pressure in the, in the transformative phase of AI. And I think that's good. You know, I think like, you know, and Matt was very, he, I think he's been very, doing a very good job of sort of acknowledging it. Yeah. You know, you're doing a lot of things. Like you're challenging yourselves to build a full stack of infrastructure. First of all, that's in itself. There yeah. are companies that just do that. And then of course you're, you know, you're challenging yourself to, you know, develop an entire toolkit for developers. Another thing that, you know, yeah. there's companies that just do that. And so, you know, then you go everywhere in between all the traditional things you've been doing all these years, you know, for, for hybrid and for, you know, uh, 
you know, Kubernetes and like everything that you Exactly. Built. Yeah. It's so much. And so I think you guys have really embraced. And, and now I think this year was a, a kind of like, you know, hey, before everybody says that, you know, AI is run by and that, that, you know, look at all the things we're doing. Yeah. And I think that's been good. And as an analyst, that's what I wanted to see. Yeah. So. And we also take an approach of we have our own Nova models. Yeah. We are evolving, iterating, innovating yeah. there. But we also support all the others. We Bad always rock. take a meet the customer where, yeah, exactly, yeah. Bedrock. No, and I think that's that's great. And that's kind of what I said, like what you're doing with Tranium, what you're doing with Bedrock. It's it's kind of, because I think cloud is a little bit of a, to your, some of the things you were saying, it's a little bit of a choose your own adventure yeah. for most yeah. companies. Like some companies really want like almost that whole drag and drop. They love, mm -hmm. you know, they love to work with you guys or Claude Code and say develop every, you know, yeah. as far yeah, as they yeah. can take it. You know, it's kind of, <laughs> Um, that you know, there's some people that like the lovable experience. Like they yeah, literally exactly. just want to type what they want. And they want to, and then there's other people that are like, no, I'm. I think Matt said this in in, in the analyst session earlier. He's like, people that kind of already know how to use this stuff, that already knew how to code, for instance, are going to do really great things, even bigger and better yeah. things. Exactly. So, and that's the opportunity. So, speaking of the opportunity, though, you know, is every enterprise wants to adopt all this stuff. I've spoken to countless boards yeah. and there's not a CEO on the planet that's not under great pressure to put AI to work, get more efficient, get more productive yeah. and grow. But the risks that come with that, you're opening a lot of risk to data, to, uh, to the exposure to security vulnerabilities, to privacy, to the governance risks that you have. And this is where observability and the stuff that you're totally you're yes. so important. Yeah. How do you kind of guide and recommend customers to do both? Because I feel like sometimes it's like a push pull and security has, the security part of Zerbo, sometimes it's kind of come later, you know, like I always call it the insurance. It's like, oh, I got to buy that. But like, it seems like it's something you really want to do together. It totally. And I will tell you, this is one of the things that's changed, I think, since the generative AI mo movement. Yeah. Previously, customers would be like, I need compute, I need storage, etc. And by the way, just like compute storage and databases are building blocks, yeah. so is generative AI today. Yeah. It's just one and the same as yeah. part of your infrastructure. But going back to that, customers that I've talked to, especially this year, previously would be like, yeah, yeah, we use some tool for observability. Now they're demanding that we need proactive remediation, recommendations. I, and I, in fact, I was talking to one of the cu customers who are migrating to the cloud who said, we want from the ground up, we want observability. It, that makes me so happy because we've been for years been saying, don't be, you know, it shouldn't be an afterthought. It should be built in from the ground up. Gen AI agents are certainly changing that perception and it's adding layers to observability that we didn't think about before. So what do you, uh, what's your one or two big pointers for all those, those customers out there that are watching this to, to get their observability uh, strategy? Yeah. Right? Please kick the tires on like all our frontier agents. They're awesome. Please do that. Check out CloudWatch investigations, generative AI observability. We have so much going on. CloudTrail has aggregated events. Uh, we have MCP, MCP servers for you. So speaking of democratization, yeah. you can use the MCP server on the lake. Like we're making things so easy. Please kick the tires on it. I love it. I love that uh, you gave everyone a little a little pointer. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, Nandini, let's do this again next yes, year. We'll make it year. an annual thing. Yes, sounds great. And thanks for joining me. Of course. Thank you all for having me on. And thank you, everybody, for being part of this 6.5. We are on the road here at AWS reInvent 2025 in Las Vegas. Hit subscribe. Join us for all of the coverage here at reInvent and, of course, all of our great content on the 6.5. For this episode, though, for the show, it is time to say goodbye. See you all later.